This was a season that had so much promise. One of the preseason favorites to start the year, and it all fell apart. I don't even know what's going on no more. Yeah, our expectations, everybody had our expectations for us. I know so many people wanted to see us fail. A lot of stuff happened throughout the season that derailed us. Too many things that held us back. I felt like I was letting the team down at a point where I wasn't able to play. I never wanted to just be about me. It became a distraction at times. No regrets. Happens. Well, with that, welcome to NBA Today presented by PNC Bank. It's the day that the Nets are cleaning out their lockers and we are putting a bow on the Nets season after the Celtics swept them. No one does a back page of a newspaper better than the Post. Nightmare. That that pretty much sums it up. I'm Malika Andrews, and that is an NBA champion with the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. It feels like you should have come in with a ring today, Perk. Let's not waste any time. I need big perks, big list of why the broom came out. Oh, absolutely. You know we got to send them off in good spirits, okay? Here it is, number three, Steve Nash. Steve Nash didn't make any adjustments in the series. He didn't put guys in position to be successful. He stood there like a statue and hoped that Kyrie and KD was going to bail them out. Coming in at number two, Bring it up. The Celtics defense, mm -hmm. right? When you look at Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Grant Williams, it's no other defense that could have held Ky Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Two of the most skilled guys to ever play the game held them and swept them. No other team in the playoffs would have swept this Brooklyn Nets besides the Celtics because of their defense. And number one, distractions. Something that the Nets been dealing with all season long. Starting with Kyrie Irving from the get-go. Not signing the uh, extension. Not choosing not to get vaccinated, which made James Harden mad. James Harden saying, I'm not about to be here and deal with this. All of a sudden, he wanted out. And then you get Ben Simmons. He comes, but he's not, he's not ready to play. Or he says he's not ready to play, but he's making great fashion statements. These are the three reasons why the Nets got swept. This is Big Perk's list. This is why they're going home. Whatever you want to call it, they out. We send them, we send them out with good with good flowers, whatever you want to call it. Well, don't worry. We're going to get into the Celtic side of this a little bit more, but let's go by the numbers on the Nets getting eliminated first. They became the first team in the last 35 seasons to enter as the preseason favorites to win the title and then not win a single playoff game. Huh. So this was the third year of KD Kyrie of their era. And with Durant missing his whole first season and Kyrie being a part-time player this season and part-time a little bit of last season too, they've only played 58 games as teammates. That's out of a total... 247 games possible, including the playoffs. And since Kerry and KD have been on this Brooklyn roster, they're 7 and 13 in the playoffs. This is the first time in their careers that those gentlemen have been swept in a series. All right, so with all of that, let's bring in our full panel here. Tim Legler, it's good to see you. Senior writer Zach Lowe joining Perk and I. Gentlemen, there are so many reasons that the Celtics swept the Nets here. So this is what I want to do. I want to give you all 100% of the blame to just pass around and divvy up as you see fit, like sort of like a pie chart type of deal. And Zach, you strike me as the most math savvy here, so I'm going to start with you. I'm choosing to be positive today, Malika, at least a little bit positive. So I'm going to give the most credit, not blame, to the Boston Celtics, Amen. who, as Perk said, Amen. have an impenetrable defense. Jason Tatum was by far the best player in the series. Ime Udoka has done an incredible job adjusting that defense along the way and getting those guys to buy into sharing the ball. They're number one. Enough with the positivity. Now we go negativity. <laughs> Next is Kyrie Irving. The team never got to gel. Wonder why the team never got to gel. Who could know? James Harden, as soon as going got tough and the team wasn't gelling, he got the hell out of there and pouted his way out of town to Philadelphia, who, by the way, is all all of a sudden in a dogfight against the Toronto Raptors. And then we have the bottom stuff. Yeah, Steve Nash, was it an A-plus coaching job or an A or an A-minus? No. Has he gotten to coach an actual basketball team for three years? Only kind of. And then management and Simmons have to come in here too because no one gets off 
when something like this happens. The Ben Simmons situation is complicated. There's mental health issues around it, which are always hard to talk about. But that trade was supposed to pay dividends to some degree right. this year. Even if it was more about the future, it paid zero. The Nets are out. The Celtics are moving on and looking very much like at least a co-favorite to win the NBA title. Legs? Well, listen, first of all, Zach's a sweeter guy than me. He put something sweet <laughs> on that pizza talking about the Celtics. That's like some pineapple or something he must have put on I that love pizza. Pineapple on okay, pizza. so yeah, he did that. I'm not, I, nothing sweet on my pizza. All right, I'm going to go <laughs> with the Nets. Six slices divided. I'm going half of Kyrie Irving. Here's why. Whether you agree with it or not, that's a, a show for another discussion about the vaccine mandate and whether he should have gotten vaccinated or not. The bottom line is his decision to do that led to James Harden looking around saying, this isn't what I, where I wanted to be, and that started to derail their season. Season. Not to mention the fact he was only available for 30 something games. That to me set everything in motion for how this season was going to go. So the vast majority goes there. I go 20% James Harden because if he stays, who knows? If, if they have those three guys together, maybe they still are able to make a run. So once he decided he wanted out, that gets 20% of the blame. I go Sean Marks 15 because this was a very short sighted, short windowed approach to how they wanted to do this. And ultimately, he's the guy that made the decision to bring this together. It, it flamed out in historic fashion by getting swept with that kind of talent on your roster. So Sean Marks has to take his 15. I got 10% Ben Simmons because he just never showed mm -hmm. up to play. And maybe he could have helped them in some regard if he ever decided to play basketball at some point before the season ended. 4% for Steve Nash. And look, I know people are beating him up about lack of adjustments and everything else. Bottom line is this. He is a first-year coach. This might have been a little bit too much for him to handle. But the truth is, I don't know if Steve Nash can coach or not because of what he was dealt with what he dealt with from the time he got there two years ago. And then finally, only 1% KD. I'm not going to lay this in KD's lap because he Me struggled neither. for three games against the best defense in the league. There's no way I'm putting it on him. He was trying to hold it down and hold it together all that time when James Harden wanted out, when Kyrie Irving wasn't playing, with the lack of roster, no Joe Harris. Who was out there? Kevin Durant was the guy trying to hold it together, and he failed at the end, and he's taken, I think, too much blame for the way he played against the best defense in the league. My friends, I, I think Kendrick Perkins' pie looks just a little yep. bit different. It, it, re it really do, and you know our motto, stay petty so we don't have to get petty, get ready to get petty, right? Here's the thing, right? I'm going with, on my blame pie, 5% Kevin Durant, 5% Kevin Durant for the simple fact that when, when I think about KD, not holding people accountable in the organization, including Kyrie Irving. I mean, Kevin Durant has been 100% in, so he gets, to me, the least amount of blame. 15% 15, 15 goes to Steve Nash for not making adjustments, for not trying to put Kevin Durant in position during the series to be successful. Listen. The way that the, the Brooklyn Nets play transition defense, not getting back, that's a reflection of their coach, in my opinion. And now, 80% of the pie goes to Kyrie Irving because it all started with him from the beginning of the season. So we all know that KD, Kyrie, and James Harden were supposed to all sign contract extensions before the season started. That didn't happen. Okay, then they go into training camp and they have a meeting while they're in training camp and Kyrie tells everyone, hey, I'm going to get vaccinated. And not only did he miss one appointment that they had set up, he lied to him and missed a few other appointments till he finally came out and said, I'm not getting vaccinated and I'm taking my stance. That's his prerogative. All of a sudden now, guess what? James Harden is saying, I don't want to be a part of this. So now we're seeing the ripple effect. Now KD has to push the button because James Harden don't want to be there. Now you trade for Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons comes aboard, and all of a sudden now it's question marks on, hey, Ben, are you going to play? Are you going to come out and try to help us? And all of a sudden, Ben Simmons says, oh, I'm going to just shut it down for the rest of the season. So that was a ripple effect from all Kyrie Irving's action from the beginning of the season. That was a sermon at the Church of Perk right there. My goodness. Mm -hmm. I, look, I don't know the details of how it was decided whether or not Kyrie Irving was going to get vaccinated. But at the end of the day, he was not available for the majority of the season. And it's hard to not say that that hurt the Brooklyn Nets here because I, my goodness we have so much more though on the Nets